David Attenborough, to begin with you, did evolution actually happen? Well, if you want to answer that question in terms of evidence, uh, the direct evidence is in the rocks in fossils. Uh, and what the rocks show is that in the earliest rocks, you have very, very simple forms of life. And as you work your way through the geological succession, life becomes more and more complicated. Um, and uh, you can trace this in tiny forms moving from one ammonite to another species of ammonite. And then they make big jumps, which are more difficult to trace for various reasons, uh, in which uh, fish are succeeded by amphibians, and amphibians are succeeded by reptiles, and reptiles by mammals. Now, this is the kind of evidence. Now, it is not in a proof in any more way than you can prove that Captain Cook came to Australia in 17 whatever he did. But the evidence, the nature of the evidence, is historical just the same. Professor Kerry Funk put the same question to you in the same words. Did evolution actually happen? The answer is no. Definitely no. He admits that in his oldest layer there's nothing but a few bacteria. In his Cambrian, which is the next layer, he's got everything there except vertebrae. Where's the evolution? Well, because you haven't seen the Precambrian fossils, clearly. Because, they're, in fact, there is a very good succession of fossils showing the link between bacteria and the first uh, metazoans. Now, he quoted an example of variation. He has presented evidence in favour of variation. But having proved variation, you have not by any means proved evolution. Let's take, for example, um, those fossil shells, ammonites. And you would say um, that they, you've got this form here, and in the next more recent layer, you find a slightly different form. Right. Well, you would say the two were not connected? No, they are connected, but that's evidence but of variation. They, but how are they connected? Probably due to differences in uh, type and variety, which you get amongst uh, all animal groups. So, so one species, as it were, gives rise to another species? Well, you may get rearrangements of inheritable but characteristics. But I mean, you would say that, that this particular species, as we understand the word, was the ancestor of that particular species? The trouble is that when you go from one major animal group now, to the next, you run into forgive an me, Forgive barrier. me, may, may I stick you on that question? You would say that this was the ancestor of that, in terms of ammonites? I said, if you've got a group in which there is fertility and they interbreed, but, then but, you can get variation. But, but in fact, we know species, different species do not interbreed, otherwise they wouldn't be species. I'm asking you about one ammonite here and the next ammonite in the rock further up, which yeah, is different. Those two ammonites were probably capable of interbreeding. But the, no, they weren't, because they lived in different times, and one is extinct in the other time. So, no, but so, I mean, they could have been I mean, capable if they'd lived simultaneously. Oh, but they didn't. So well, the question is... Well, now, you said that they didn't, but what evidence have you for this? Because of the survey of the fossils, do you find all these ammonites in this layer and none of the next species of ammonites in the layer above? At this point, Professor Carey, let's look at your speciality, which is physiology and reproductive physiology. You have a, an argument based on the pill. What is that argument? If we take the pill, which is, in fact, this one here, happens to be very similar to the hormonal secretion that occurs in a normal cycle. The same hormones occurring in the same sequence at about the same concentration. There's only one minor difference between what happens in a fertile cycle and what happens when you use this. That's enough to render the patient infertile. So that any minor change from what is the normal physiology, the normal function, ends up in infertility. How can you get evolution when every new species dies out as soon as it's formed? I don't know that we have enough evidence to say that because I don't think we can experiment over a sufficient period of time to demonstrate processes which take tens of millions of years. Uh, my concern, uh, as I've said, is, is, is not to argue about the mechanisms by which these play, uh, changes took place, which I'm sure our knowledge is incomplete, but to look at the proposition that one form is descended from another that there is a biological unity of life, for which it seems to me the evidence is altogether overwhelming. But there's no way of stopping you two, but I'm, 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 I'm going to stop you anyway. And I'm going to do so, I start of asking the same question, I'm going to finish by asking you both the same question. David Attenborough, does the concept of evolution matter? Is it important? Yes, of crucial importance. It has, um, because it, unless that we understand that, 
we don't understand our position within the world and our relationship with the world of nature, and we tend to think that we are somehow separate from the world of nature, which I think is uh, uh, full of awful consequences if we really believe that. And if I put the same question to you, Professor Kerry, in the same words, does the concept of evolution matter? It does, because if we really look at science, science shows that there's tremendous design in science, a lot of complexity, there's, and if you have a, an intricate design, it doesn't happen by chance. There must be a designer.